welcome to Bangkok. In today's video, I'm gonna take you to some must-see attractions in Bangkok. You cannot come to Bangkok without seeing the Grand Palace and three incredible temples. So let's go see if these attractions are worth visiting when you come to Bangkok. Okay, first stop was the Grand Palace in Bangkok. And I couldn't actually film like a vlog inside because the security guard immediately stopped me and said no photos or filming with a microphone. So that kind of ruined that, but I'll play some of the footage, I'll talk to you a little bit about it, and we'll still have a proper look around. Right, entrance fee was 500 baht. Yeah, 500 baht is the most we have paid for anything in Thailand. Let me tell you a little bit about the history of this place. Situated in the heart of Bangkok, the Grand Palace has been a royal residence since the reign of King Rama I in the 18th century. The complex consists of numerous buildings, halls, pavilions, temples, gardens and courtyards. And here's an interesting fact. The palace was initially built entirely out of wood. The kingdom began replacing the wooden structures with masonry. And to find materials, King Rama I ordered his men to go upriver to the old capital city of Ayutthaya which was devastated in 1767 during the war between Burma, or Myanmar, and Siam, now known as Thailand. They were tasked with dismantling and removing as many bricks as possible, with strict orders not to remove any from the existing temples. The bricks were then taken down the Chao Phraya River, and they were eventually incorporated into the walls of the Grand Palace. By 1925, the king, the royal family, and the government were no longer permanently residing in the palace, and they had moved to other residences. As you can see, the palace is now open as a tourist attraction, rather than a royal residence. Anyway, that's enough about the history. What about the question of, is it worth the money? I'll tell you the answer to that question when we finish this tour of the palace, but... Look, it is very pretty. Individually, there are a lot of very beautiful things. I mean, the buildings are great, the sculptures are beautiful, as you can see, and the murals and paintings on the walls, again, are very interesting. But a lot of places are closed or restricted, and you can't actually go inside, so you see a lot of shut doors, uh, and I don't know, there's no information boards. I would like to know more, to be honest, and I would like to explore in more places. It does feel like I'm just walking around having a look on the outside of the buildings and then moving on without really taking much of it in. But yeah, you decide for yourselves from these images. And to be honest, these quick clips do make it look a bit better than I kind of felt it was in person. So anyway, there's a hint to what I think of this place. I'll see you outside. Okay, I've just come out of the Grand Palace, and to be honest, I was a little underwhelmed. I mean, it's 500 baht for a start, which as I said, is the most expensive thing we've paid for in Thailand. But it was also annoying to be told not to film. It's not like I'm the first YouTuber or person who's trying to film in there with a the microphone. That was annoying, but hey, if that's what the rule is today, that's what the rule is today. Uh, I don't know, it just didn't really capture me, I didn't really get any feeling in there, it just felt like I was walking around having a look at some relatively pretty things but nothing really wowed me, it just felt a bit stale. Uh, yeah, a little negative, sorry about that. I'm sure if you come, you will love it. I just, yeah, it wasn't really my thing. But, <laughs> right next to here we have Wat Po and that's where we're going to head next so I'll see you guys over there. Probably worth mentioning, there are a couple of scams that go on around here and they just try to get me with it even though I've already been into the Grand Palace. But the tuk-tuk drivers will strike up a conversation with you, very friendly, and they'll tell you that the Grand Palace is closed. <laughs> and uh, they will then offer you an alternative trip where you give them roughly the same money and they'll take you to some other temples around Bangkok. Now obviously, it's not what you intended to do and the temples aren't that great. So it is a bit of a scam considering the palace is open. Even more so that I've just been inside and he's telling me it's closed. But I thought I'd just mention it just to make sure you don't get caught out with that scam. A 
Okay, we made it inside Wat Po, and it's right next to the Grand Palace, so it's very easy to get to it, it's only a few minutes walk. And in this instance it's 200 baht, so much better value than the Grand Palace, although it's still expensive for a temple in Thailand. Normally they are free, but it's still early, it's about half nine, and it's incredibly quiet. I think everyone starts with the Grand Palace, and then works their way around the other temples in the area. So. Let's check this place out and see if this temple is worth its 200 baht entrance fee. These chedis behind me are absolutely beautiful and so unique. I haven't seen anything like this. And apparently it was the design favored by King Rama III who took the Chinese style, took some other foreign styles and combined it with the Thai style of Chedi and created this <laughs> beautiful, beautiful design for these Chedis in this temple. And they're everywhere, there's small ones and there's larger ones, but already this place just has a different vibe to the Grand Palace. Maybe because it's quiet, I'm not sure, but it just feels like a beautiful place and a nice place to be. It has, has more of a feeling to it. Let's carry on exploring. You see, one of the reasons I like this place is that it has information, there's QR codes that you can scan and there's information boards. So I'm not just looking at something and not understanding what it is, I can actually read about it. And these chedis actually, I said the first one that I stood next to was uh, designed by King Rama III and it was. But actually the other chedis are um, built in the time of the other kings. So you have Rama the first here and Rama the second in the middle. And each has a slightly different design, I guess, depending on what the king, king's preference was. But <laughs> the information board definitely helps the understanding and the enjoyment of this temple. Wapo is known as Temple of the Reclining Buddha and here we have the absolutely ginormous reclining Buddha. I don't think I've seen one so big on the travels. We've seen some pretty big Buddha statues but this one may have to take it as the biggest and it's incredibly beautiful and very very impressive. normally on the large Buddha statues because they're so large you can't actually get so close but with this one you are right next to it so you really get a feel for its size and 200 baht yeah steep price to come into a temple but to see this reclining Buddha I think it's worth it It's in a very beautiful building too with murals on the walls. The Grand Palace had a lot of murals too and this one again has very interesting murals and if you actually stop and look at them they are incredibly beautiful sometimes imposed with gold but I can't fully understand the story they're trying to tell but they are definitely trying to tell a story and it, I'm sure it is incredibly interesting. Don't just walk past them, stop and have a look. And of course you've got Buddha's footprint on the bottom and we saw one before. This one is made from Mother of Pearl, which very intricate, very beautiful. Just another awesome detail on this beautiful, beautiful statue. I still can't get over its size. When you come to the end of it and look all the way down, you can just see how huge this statue is. As in most Buddhist temples, there's a way to make merit. And in this temple, you can buy a cup for 20 baht of quarter baht and half baht coins and obviously they don't really mean much in terms of value but you walk along and put them into these uh, metal bowls to make merit. Ok 
Okay, and that is it for Wat Po. I really enjoyed this one. Very, very beautiful, and seeing the Golden Buddha was quite special, actually. So definitely recommend this one. This one gets a tick from me, if that means anything. And next up, we're going to cross the river, and we're going to go to another temple called Wat Arun. Okay, we made it to Watarun, or Temple of the Dawn. We just had to cross the river, as you saw. It was only five baht, and entrance to this temple is 100 baht, but this time, you get a free bottle of water, which in this heat is quite handy, I must say. So, as with the others, let's go check it out. Mmm, who doesn't love warm water on a hot day? Wow, I was not expecting it to be so beautiful. And you can kind of get a sense for how beautiful it is across the river and when you're coming across, of course, it is a large structure which sits literally on the river. But when you get up close, you see the detail on it. It is absolutely exquisite. And the colors, yeah. the blues, the yellows, the greens offset against the white base just gives it such an amazing look. And I'd say it's definitely my favourite temple in Bangkok that I've seen. It's probably right up there with my favourite temples in Thailand that I've seen. It doesn't have the peaceful, uh, mystical almost feeling to it, but in terms of its looks, it is, it is right up there, as I say. Okay, we have made it to our final temple of the day, and it's probably the least well-known. It's called Wat Saket, or the Golden Mountain. And it's called Golden Mountain because you have a beautiful, stunning pagoda at the top of this hill. It's over 300 steps to the top. The ticket costs 50 baht, so it's the cheapest. And actually, we've gone from the most expensive temple to the cheapest temple of the four, uh, more by luck than design. So let me grab a ticket and let's start making our way up because I think the views from the top are breathtaking over the city of Bangkok. It's a nice entrance. I mean, we're in the middle of the city, of course, but they've tried to make it feel like you're in nature with the plants and the water running, waterfalls coming down off the Golden Mountain. But it does sound like there's a ceremony going on at the top, so let's keep our fingers crossed there's not. So I don't want to be disrespectful and interrupt, but I'm already liking the walk up. And it is over 300 steps, but they're very shallow gradient. I wouldn't say it's a challenge. And you have these beautiful water features next to you. You don't need to go fast. Just relax and take your time to the top. We just come up to the first level, and it looks like there are levels, so it's not continuous either. And here you have some prayer bells and an absolutely giant gong. We should ring it, shouldn't we? I mean, normally I don't do these things, but when it's that size, you can't not ring it. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> one more time, one more time.
pretty cool. I won't ring the prayer bells. Okay, let's carry on going up. So we're coming above the tree line, just starting to get a view over the city. And we're not at the top yet, so it is going to get even better. We've come into this shrine area, which is full of golden statues that people are praying to. You have windows looking over the amazing view. Someone is actually drawing and it looks absolutely spectacular. I wish I had that talent, but sadly I don't. I thought this was it. I thought this was the top, but actually we can go even higher up and get to the golden pagoda at the top. I thought it was a bit strange that you can see it and they don't allow you up there. So we'll head up one more level to the golden pagoda. Now we really are at the top. <laughs> and this is better. You have an uninterrupted 360 degree view of Bangkok and this gorgeous golden chedi. Now it's the middle of the day now, it's midday and it's absolutely scorching, it's super bright, but I imagine this place would be amazing at sunset. The only problem is, every day around 4 to 8 p.m. you have a huge storm and you don't really get a sunset, you have to be pretty lucky. So I chose to come in the morning, obviously if you're not in rainy season you are going to get the sunset and I recommend coming here for sunset because the view is incredible across the city. Now I know you can get it in your condo, but it depends where you're staying. I happen to be on the lower floor this time, so I don't have it. But to be in this part of the city, in the old part of the city, it's pretty special to have this view. And you can play the game of looking over the skyline and picking out other temples or other buildings that you recognize. But a very, very beautiful place. The Golden Pagoda, or the Golden Chedi, is beautiful, you've got the chanting or music in the background and then this spectacular view. Which is my favorite? It's Wataruna, or it's this one. Wataruna is just utterly beautiful as a temple itself, but as I say, this view is special, so it's between those two. Really liked Wat Po. The reclining Buddha was, again, very unique and special to see. Grand Palace. I'm not going to say give it a miss because it's like one of those places you have to go to. But I don't think I'll be going back. Um, it just doesn't live up to the hype or even the ticket price. But the rest of them definitely put on your to-do list when you come to Bangkok. It's been a really fun morning and it has taken about half a day to get around all of them. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've enjoyed this little trip around the temples of Bangkok. I will see you guys in the next video. Oh,